I think we would we would definitely see what we could do about uh, seeking investment earlier, even though it has been a challenge. Because when we went to investors, as I mentioned, they said that come back to us when you are post revenue. Alternatively, uh, we did talk with some customers about, you know, how about you guys invest in us? And then, you know, we can take this. Uh, we didn't seek out too many. And I think maybe in hindsight, you know, we should have uh, because surely we would have benefited their company. But the ones that we did seek out, uh, they said, no, we just want to buy. We, we don't invest. That's just not something that we do. So mm. going back, I think we should have worked a little harder on that, especially given that we are in manufacturing. Hi, everyone. This is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Founder. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups into seven and eight-figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps sm or startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. <clears throat> Now, today we have a, another great guest on the podcast, uh, Mariam Isafani, and that's as close as I'm going to get to pronouncing it right, um, but uh, quick background on her. Um, so had uh, been in the renewable area, uh, renewable space area for about uh, 13 years, mostly in solar, um, wanted to focus on a different area of renewables, so uh, shifted over to uh, pl the plastics issue and recycling, uh, wanted to figure out an alternative to plastics and uh, ship or started shipping out uh, a lot of different materials to team members to, to see which materials uh, they could start making new products out of. Um, then identified some uh, different materials and then uh, went out to get some uh, investor dollars and also commercialize the product. And that kind of brings us uh, to where she's at today. So with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast at Miriam. Uh, thank you very much, Devin. Always a pleasure to see you and talk to you and love your work. Absolutely. And just as a quick reminder to the uh, audience, so uh, Miriam has been on a, a couple of our uh, sister podcasts, so both the um, Inventive Journey as well as the Inventive Expert. So if you want to uh, go and catch a little bit more about her full journey and or uh, her uh, expertise, definitely go uh, go catch uh, her episodes on those sister uh, podcasts. Um, but uh, for today, let's uh, dive into a little bit more of your founding journey. So rewinding just uh, before you uh, started the the current business. Um, so you were, uh, I think, in the renewable space industry, primarily in solar for a number of years before you kind of uh, got into what you're doing today. So give us a little bit of that background. Yeah. So, yeah, I started uh, with batteries actually more than 14 years ago and was working with several battery manufacturers. And then I realized that, you know, that's kind of like not the way I'd like to go. And so started uh, focusing on solar batteries, which then led me to working in solar and got a business partner. And we designed solar systems, uh, which were small systems for rural areas. And we sold in uh, eight different countries in Africa and uh, two countries in South Asia and uh we were doing really well. Things, uh, you know, were looking up. Uh, we wanted to continue producing. We were producing in a country called Bangladesh. Mm. And um, we ran into some quality issues. Uh, so eventually we had to uh, switch over to China. But uh, it was a great uh, uh, fun project, uh, startup. And uh, after that, unfortunately, uh, in some of the countries, the electricity was subsidized. As a result of that, they were getting rid of the small solar systems. They were no longer interested in them. And mm -hmm. people started focusing on rooftop solar, floating solar, large solar projects, things like that. And so we said, okay, so the market got pretty saturated, said, let's try to do something else instead. Uh, anyway, I, di I did that for many years and we had a great time. And then uh, just over three years ago, I got into solving plastic pollution mm. and have been very focused on that. Uh, solar business is still there on the side, a partner is handling it. Uh, I'm not that involved, but I'm definitely there. If solar projects come up, consulting is needed and such. But solving plastic pollution became something which uh, is causing a lot of issues on our planet. 
And so I said, okay, we need to focus more on this from the renewable uh, further into the uh, environment and climate space. And so I've been working on that and uh, happy to talk about that, how that's going. It, it, it was all through the pandemic. So uh, it was quite a ride. So now just to rewind just a little bit. So as you're saying, hey, I'd like to, you know, kind of focus on tackle the different area within the renewables, which would be more on the plastic issues and how you might uh, solve that. When did you kind of start to, to make that transition or, or shift over to doing that? Uh, uh, just over three years ago, somebody approached me and said, you know, let's focus on uh, recycling. And so initially I wanted to do that, but then I noticed that recycling isn't working after doing a, uh, some research. And at the time I was uh, traveling in South Asia, primarily in Bangladesh. And, uh, you know, there were no recycling programs. And so I said, okay, so uh, this isn't working. So what should we do? People said, well, you don't want us to use plastic bottles and plastic bags and plastic stuff. So then what should we do? So then the idea popped up. Okay, so we have to provide alternatives. And so mm -hmm. got going on how to design these alternatives. Where should they go? What should we do about them? And it kind of um, took off from there. And I put together a team uh, mainly comprised of scientists as well as some sales, marketing, business development people. And uh, we just ran with that. Now, when you kind of got uh, started there, was it, you know, you started to build the team together, started to kind of figure out the, the problem or how you wanted to tackle it. At that mm -hmm. point, where did you start the company, do it full time, went out and got investor dollars? Or kind of did you start to do it as a side hustle or on the side and kind of figure out what the business might, might look like? Or kind of how did you decide to kind of how to where to focus and, and where to dive in? Yeah, I know. I went at this full time. And so, you know, I've been a startup person. This is like my seventh startup. So I love startups. Some, some flew, some failed. You know, it happens. It's challenging. Uh, but uh, on this one, also, I, I went full time into this. I didn't have any part time job or side job or income and put whatever money I had, savings, uh, you know, you name it, uh, 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 inheritance money. And I got a co founder. He put in some money and uh, we just said we're going to go through this, you know, together. So it didn't. Uh, and it was the pandemic time. Uh, we started a few months after that, you know, when we literally we got going in February of 2020, the pandemic hit in March. And mm -hmm. right before that, we had a potential investor who offered us $5 million to do a very large project. They would set up the factory for us. They would do everything, uh, a Middle Eastern investor. Uh, when the pandemic hit, then they said, okay, you know, we don't know if we're going to be alive tomorrow. We don't know what's going on. So they backed off and uh, then uh, said, okay, so what should we do? Nobody seems to be investing at this time. So it was our money, my co-founder's money and mine. And then um, we move forward because we said, look, either we can just sit around and watch TV and do nothing, or we can start making products and do research. And so that's exactly what we did. We spent the time developing our products. And then when we went to investors, uh, we got rejected because they said, oh, you are pre-revenue, come back to us when you're post-revenue. So then um, I focused very hard to try to get customers. Uh, we landed some customers, one very big multinational one. And on top of that, some uh, other customers who were asking for huge, uh, they had very uh, large demands. We have uh, purchase orders, we have letters of intent, we have sales requests. I mean, uh, we have, you know, a good problem, as in lots of, uh, uh, the market is there for us, lots of uh, requests. Mm. But uh, right now we're struggling because in order to commercialize these products, we need more money. And so we're seeking, you know, investment. Uh, we have not taken any outside money, not diluted anything so far. But we do definitely need uh, to commercialize these products because we're getting orders, uh, 3,000 metric tons a month uh, and more, and we are not being able to fulfill these orders. And these companies want to use our environmentally friendly uh, products, alternatives to petroleum-based, uh, fossil fuel-based products. 
No, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, you took the opportunity rather than just kind of sitting back and seeing how yeah. things were to play out to figure out, hey, what is the uh, what can we do with the, the time that we have? How can we productize this and how can we get in the marketplace? So it sounds like um, a good uh, use of time and a great iteration and now continuing to, um, you know, develop things and proceed forward and uh, looking for avenues to, to grow. Now, one kind of question, because you started to touch on it and you're still, you know, fairly but I'd put in quotes, early stage business or just, you know, been in business for a few years and continuing to evolve and iterate. Now, as you originally jumped in, you know, full time, getting things going, setting things up, bringing the team on, you know, figuring out the the products and the materials and that, you know, kind of walk us through, is that something that was pretty quick and you just, you know, figured it out and got the product in hand and you were off to the races or is it one where you had to iterate quite a bit or continuing to revise and, and figure out, you know, what that is and what uh, the product might be or what the marketplace was. So walk us through or expand a little bit on kind of in those early days, how or how that got going. Oh, uh, you see, we are in manufacturing and when, uh, we're not talking software, so it's not like we just need two laptops and we need a little, you know, home office and we're good to go. We're in manufacturing, which requires a lot of machinery, which requires a lot of funds. And mm. so uh, from the get go, we needed, you know, to have funds. And I poured in, you know, several hundred thousand dollars into this to get this going. And we didn't have any help. And uh, it was just us, you know, doing this and the scientists on the team taking, uh, you know, practically no salary, working hard, dedicating their time and efforts. And uh, initially we thought, OK, so what should we do? What plant should we use? How should we make these alternatives? So we had to figure that out. Then when we did, uh, we opted for a plant that does uh, that is not edible. And so we're not taking away from what human beings consume. So we were very happy with that. We have ample access to it, uh, thanks to you know um, our network. And uh, then it was a question of uh, you know which product should we make from this? And we came up with seven products, seven. And you know people were freaking out that that's like ridiculous. People have one. Why do you have seven? Uh, Investors, uh, potential investors, uh, advisors all said to us that, you know, that is uh, excessive. So we narrowed it down to three products and we've been focusing very much on one of them, but we do have the other two also uh, on a smaller scale. And uh, we had to work with scientific teams on the customer side of things as well, because uh, this is something which is not just make it, put it on the shelf and they buy it. And we're B2B selling. So, uh, you know, this is a different way of selling uh, where we have to work with, uh, with the businesses and their teams. So we did several different formulations. And then finally we said, okay, this looks better. That looks better. This is doable. And so we did pilot projects and we're happy about that. We got a lot of support for that from our customers. And uh, that was a big asset because there were several customers who didn't want to support us. They said, no, after you make it, we'll just buy it. But there were some who supported us on the journey through the R&D, through, you know, hey, this works, this doesn't work for us. And uh, now finally we've landed up with, with these products and customer requests. So we are in a very good position. Awesome. No, sounds like uh, quite the journey and uh, the, to where you guys are at and figuring things out and sounds like uh uh, figured things out uh, well along the way. And so so now kind of uh, catch us up. You, you started to touch on it and, and uh, it gave us a little bit of insight, but uh, where are things at today? So you guys have been uh, a business for three years and you're looking to, you know, right now you're wholly owned or haven't uh, had to take on uh, an investor dollars or that. And you're looking to maybe expand and grow, but kind of give us an idea of where's the business at today from the product side and also from the kind of where you guys are looking to head for, or move forward. Yeah. So believe it or not, I'm going to just, uh, you know, jump on a slightly different angle, which is we got phone calls from large companies wanting to buy us out. And mm. we are like, we just got started, you know, like we haven't even like been able to deliver. Like I said, we have a good problem. We have customer orders, but we are not being able to deliver because of lack of funds. So uh, where we are at right now is we have the orders and we need uh, uh, funding. We need uh, investment for equity. Uh, we are happy to provide shares in the company as uh, startups do. Uh, we have it all figured out. We have a great team. Everybody's willing to you know, do their bit. 
and we need to get this investment so we can have our own little uh, factory operation because right now we've been using uh, uh, private uh, facilities and uh, we don't want to use private facilities and third parties even though we are using our own scientists at those facilities we have not been giving out our formula recipe what have you uh, to to others because we wanted to be managing everything and uh, we have the orders and we really need to move fast on this because to commercialize, to make things on a large scale. And it's not just that, you know, oh, we want to get this going and we want to be profitable like ASAP. We know that the situation on the planet is dire. And therefore, you know, we really do need alternatives. We need something, anything, uh, whether we're talking about decarbonization or we're talking about, you know, cleaning up our oceans and rivers and not polluting them further, we need to do something. And so we have the solution and we would just like, uh, uh, you know, an investor or two to believe in us. And since we have the customers, we see no reason why uh, uh, they would not move forward with us. So that, that's where we're at. We have large mm. orders now and we need to fulfill them. Otherwise, we're just going to keep doing small, small orders and and that's not really beneficial to uh, any uh, party. No, sounds like, uh, sounds like a great opportunity for those that are out there that are looking to uh, get involved with uh, or helping to solve a lot of the issues with, uh, with plastics and also uh, with the environment in general. So sounds like definitely a great opportunity. And so with that, now as we've kind of uh, caught up to the, you know, where you're at today and kind of uh, what there, what, uh, what's going on with the business and also hearing the the full founding journey, it's a great time to transition to the question I was like to ask towards the end of each episode, which is, so if you were able to go back and I get that you're, you know, still probably consider yourself in the early days, but if you go back to the early days of the business and uh, take a look and say, what would be the one thing you do differently? For you guys, what would that uh, one decision you'd make uh, differently be? Uh, I think we would we would definitely see what we could do about uh, seeking investment earlier, even though it has been a challenge. Because when we went to investors, as I mentioned, they said that come back to us when you are post revenue. Alternatively, mm -hmm. uh, we did talk with some customers about you know how about you guys invest in us, and then you know we can take this. Uh, we didn't seek out too many, and I think maybe in hindsight, you know, we should have, uh, because surely we would have benefited their company. But the ones that we did seek out, uh, they said, no, we just want to buy. We, we don't invest. That's just not something that we do. So mm. going back, I think we should have worked a little harder on that, especially given that we are in manufacturing. And this is not software. And so, you know, this is different. This is climate tech, but manufacturing. So we should have uh, maybe focused on that, knowing that we're going to get to this point where we're going to get, you know, someone mm. asking us for 3,000 tons a month. Or, you know, uh, that's millions and millions of dollars. And uh, how do we fulfill this order? Hmm. No, I think that, uh, you know, that's definitely... Uh... A good, uh, good thing to to learn from, uh, you know, and it's kind of one where you always trying to the balance of, hey, how aggressive you get with fundraising, with uh, being ready to productize, get things in place, and how much of that obligation you take on early on versus when do you do that? And so it's always an area where you can make a decision differently looking back, but also a great one to to learn from. So now as uh, as we do wrap up the uh, at the episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? Yeah, sure. Uh, our website is shonalibioplastics.com and I'm sure you'll provide that uh, link. Uh, I'm very accessible. I enjoy being on LinkedIn, the business network. And I uh, have a very large network there, like over 21,000 people on my network. I, I'm very active on Twitter, uh, 36,000 some people on there. So, you know, there's always uh, our website or social media. Uh, we are very accessible. And I spend my time 
uh, shuttling between California and Bangladesh at this time because this project is in both places. Uh, mm. And uh, we are seeking assistance from any any uh, potential investor. We are not currently hiring, but when we do hire, according to our five-year plan, we need about 200 people. And so we need to expand, like expand fast because the orders are piling up. But uh, we definitely uh, would, uh, we are open to potential investors, people who want to collaborate with us, anyone who even needs consulting. You know, we have an amazing team. Uh, I myself am like, you know, 14 some years in this particular field. So, and we're very busy right now with Climate Week. And, you know, I've just spent the last uh, three some weeks on the East Coast uh, between New York, New Jersey, and D.C. So the Climate Week is heating up and we need to, like, participate there and network. Awesome. Well, definitely uh, sounds like a, a lot of uh, great opportunities to connect up, support a great business, invest in a great cause, and if nothing else, uh, make a new best friend. So thank yeah. you again, Miriam, for uh, coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you that are listeners that are out there, if you have your own journey to share and you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, we'd love to have you. So let's go to inventiveguest.com, apply to be on the show. A couple more things as listeners, make sure to click share, subscribe, leave us a review, helps us to share these founding journeys with even more startups and small businesses to help them along their journey to success. And on that note, um, if you ever need help along your journey with patents or trademarks or anything else for your startup, your small business, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Well, thank you again, Miriam, for uh, coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.